co-hosts Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is film journalist, author, and programmer Heidi Honeycutt, whose work has appeared in publications like Fangoria Magazine and Movie Maker Magazine. And today we're reviewing Hit TV, directed by Saman Kesh. Make sure to check it out before watching our review. The link is in the description below. Enjoy the movie and our review. Kevin's Pick is the stylish thriller Hit TV by Saman Kesh. It's drive meets memento with a twist of dystopian sci-fi as a mysterious man searches for his wife after she's been kidnapped by a mysterious organization that puts bounties on people's heads via the television. Um, Kevin, why don't you just get right into it and tell us why you like this? Well, I, I, actually, the first thing I would say is that this actually reminds me way more of a Tarantino movie or um, Inherent Vice or something like that. It's not the sort of thing that I normally like. I don't really like all of the... Um, I'm really smart making lots of references to other things and putting them together sort of. I mean, that's not usually the, th the thing that I like. But just like in Tarantino's early movies, he does it, he did it so well that you overcome the fact that you don't you're not naturally inclined to like that sort of thing. And this is the sort of the same thing for me. He did such a good job and it's so well put together that even though it's not my sort of film, I still enjoyed it. I still wanted to see I mean, I wish that this had gone on twice as long, right? I wanted to see yet another hitman come in and how he was, you know, who, you know, how he was going to kill the guy and another one and another one and what was going to happen to the prostitute. And I, I mean, I cared. Well, and this was titled a prologue. Yes. Yeah. So I, this is probably there's going to be a larger. Oh, that film is here. I think for he's, sure. I think he's intention. developing a. He's. I guess the idea behind it is to try to develop either a series or a feature. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of, he made this to sort of show this is what it's going to be like. Yes. And, you know, you say Tarantino, but honestly, my when I watched it, the it's so visually striking. But the two things that popped into my head right away, number one, Miami Vice. Miami Vice, sure. And number two, Max Headroom. Yeah, sure. So it's sort of, literally, if you took those two, it's so 80s that I don't, I don't even see any Tarantino in there, really. I see pure, like, like um, 80s action um, and a little bit of horror thrown in, even with like these cr these these beautiful visuals and the colors and the lighting. Although he takes it a little too far sometimes, like he's super proud of that flamingo. Right. You see that flamingo like eight times, and by the eighth time, you're like, I get it. It's it's a cool flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> I would be proud of it too. Right. Yeah. Move on. Um, but you know, I think it's it's really style over substance in a way because the plot is interesting, but the the lead dude doesn't grab me at all. Like I yeah. feel like he was just like their friend. Right. He's like their one friend who was in shape or something and they were like you can be the superhero or whatever. And uh you know uh, he's he's okay but the and the whole plot about they only I have, have to, one friend who You know was what in I mean? Shape, I don't probably. know. <laughs> I'm just saying like if it's, he's not the you know I'm sure he w let me put it this way. If it becomes a feature, I don't think that would be the guy that would be yeah. cast. Well, I um, also I also think though that they he spent his 10 minutes or so setting up the premise yeah. a lot more than setting up the character. Yeah. And in most cases, that's a really bad idea. But in this case, because the premise is so different, it's so far removed from what we think of as reality, right? I think it was important to do that. So maybe as a short film, it's a little bit unsatisfying because you never really care about the, you're right. I mean, 100%, I agree. You never really care about the guy. Um, but I do think it's because he's trying to set up the larger premise. And I, I think you're going to get people sort of on both sides of that, of, of that divide with this film. If you, you, you might really legitimately be turned off by the fact that there's no character development. Or you might well, just dig the premise. I don't know that it's that I don't care what happens to the character. I think it's that the, the reason we should care about him, that his wife disappeared or whatever is so it's like the it's punisher flimsy. it's every comic book ever it's my wife's you know well every he's, single thing and i just i'm just like i don't give a shit about your wife he's pulling that from right. memento this is this is clearly very heavily memento yeah. influence and you can tell there's actually a couple easter eggs in it uh the guy in the beginning with the um mug shot his name is Nolan Jenkins, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is Sammy mm. Jenkins yeah. from yeah, Memento yeah, yeah, yeah. and Christopher, Christopher Nolan. Nolan's name. Yeah. And then there's the Polaroids on the ground. Yeah. So he's Good pulling job. that from Memento. And then he's pulling the style, I think, from Drive. You know, he wants to be this 80s retro synthesizer in the end type style. And I think that 
that gets in the way. It's such a compelling uh, premise and it's such a compelling idea with the bounty and the hitmen one after another killing each other. I think that's mm -hmm. such a great idea that like you're saying, I don't think he needs all these references in there. I mean, I just think right. it's so much more interesting without that. Yeah. Well, to add on to the pile of our comparisons, which are all like really great filmmakers, so I love yeah. that this person is getting these quotes from us, so please feel free to use that. But um, <laughs> I would like to submit the Wachowskis because this is something where it's very pretty, it's such a beautiful world, but the characters and the storyline are just maybe not your strong suit, at least in this short. Like, I'm hoping that when the big thing gets made and I would love to subscribe to that newsletter I'm gonna go hunt it down but uh, I feel like it just needs to beef up a little more so that we can enjoy it really because yeah. it's a world I'd love to play in you know but it's just not there yet story-wise yeah. yeah. I mean that I do think he's definitely put more focus on starting to establish the world than he has on the characters you know yeah. and I mean if you think about what's popular today it's all these kind of very well developed, unique worlds. So it's not a bad idea on his part. Yeah. You know, 80s retro world. I mean, I couldn't make that short. It's, it's brilliant. I mean, like, yeah. you know, I'll nitpick it, but seriously, it's beautiful and it looks oh, yeah. great. And uh, the director has a background in music videos. So I think a lot of that, I think that's sort of where the focus mm. is for this guy, like on the visuals and on the camera and on the lighting. And it looks fantastic. But yeah, I'm, we're complaining, but this is definitely a thumbs up short yeah. film. Oh, it's oh, a yeah. very, very, don't, very, don't take very that good. as a complaint. That's a we can't put you in a box, yeah. and that's awesome. Yeah.